Hello and welcome back for another episode of Crusader Kings 2 and picking right up where my previous episode ended. Just I put in a cut and still recording. But um Hold on, I just got Title Loss and Succession, King of Sweden. Uh oh, we gotta take a look into that. Our war with the whole Roman Empire is not going the way we want it to. We've we're winning on occupation. But we're losing battles. Let's see, and I've also gone through and put, told a bunch of people to stop their plotting. I got some marriages arranged, did all that off screen there. We're letting our troops march back to friendly territory so we can put them down. At this point, we're just saying, England, you can either win this fight or lose it. It's up to you. And our son Armfast has had another son, and he named him Soon, it looks like. So got Harold and soon. Okay, but anyways, we've got a problem over here. Tide loss on succession. Duke Enar of Upland is getting three votes. He is our son Arnfast. No one is voting for Arnfast. This is troubling. This is very troubling indeed. Let's look at. Let's see. Let's come over here to laws. Look at. Oh, everybody is voting for Enar of Upland. Wow. He don't like our son. What is wrong with our son? Dislike him. He is reckless. He is lustful. Spineless. Too young. Wow. We got a problem. And meanwhile, everybody likes Enar. Okay, so let's pause the clock. Who is Enar? Enar is the new Duke of Upland. The previous Duke died. And he's not the same household it was. Eskild was the previous Duke of Upland. When he died, he had held four duchies. Three of those duchies were inherited by his son, Borkyard II. I take that back. Two of those duchies were inherited by Borkvard. A skilled. Alright, so let's take a look here. The Duchy of Upland, because we are elective, not everyone in these duchies all voted for the same person. A skilled, his du the Duchy of Upland was inherited by Enar. Enar is the Count of Gastriclin of House Afroden and he is very very popular he's got really good traits highly suspicious this character is almost certainly a member of a secret society okay and he also has sympathy for, for pagan religions this guy is almost certainly going to be trouble I can almost guarantee that he is secretly a pagan and we're getting ready to have a pagan outbreak in Sweden. I'm sorry, Enar, but you're going to have to go. We're going to have to deal with him. He's got... I would, if it wasn't for this problem here, I would really like this guy. He's got perfect traits. The only problem is we cannot, we do not want to lose Sweden. We want Arnfast to be the king of Sweden. Next king of Sweden. But everyone's going to be voting for Enar and... I'm highly concerned that he is secretly pagan. If we look at these, uh, let's look at these other duchies though. So, the other previous Duke of, so Borkyard, he inherited two of his father's duchies. He inherited the Duchy of House England, as well as the Duchy of Bergeslin. There's still one more duchy here. Which was the okay? I've I've got it wrong. There's there were just three duchies and two counties. Upland went to Borkvard, and no, yes, Upland and Allen both went to Borkyard. Okay. So let's take a look. What does this mean? Because I'm still voting for Arnfast. What does this mean for our duchy? Let's come down here look at more. King of Sweden would go 
to Enar because of elective. Duchy of Smallen would still go to Armfast because of primogeniture. More Olin. Everything is going to Armfast except for the King of Sweden. So we are not looking at a pending game over. That's the first concern. That is the first relief, I should say. We do not want to lose Sweden. I do not want to lose the Kingdom of Sweden here. But if we do, it's not game over. Arnfast would just be relegated to being a duke instead of the king. I do not know if Arnfast would get a claim on the Kingdom of Sweden or not. In other words, we will definitely keep an eye on that. So Arnfast, people are not liking you. Wow, what happened to your diplomacy, man? Why is your diplomacy zero? No wonder no one likes you. How are your brothers? Let's see, your son, Harold, we'll keep an eye on him. And what about Arnfast's brother, Joseph? Joseph is not turning out good at all. He's deceitful, content, envious. Okay. So we've got some work to do on our future heirs, apparently. Let's go ahead and get the clock rolling. And see, uh, check out these messages. Someone else wants to get married. Once again, we'll take care of that off screen between episodes. Okay. Enar. I think you're going to have to go. So just out of curiosity, if we want to have him silenced. I'm going to stop the clock again. If we were to say plot to kill him, oh, we only have a 22% chance and he's so popular I had doubt anyone's even going to go along with this. No, literally, been, literally nobody would be willing to help me. Very, very troubling indeed. Okay, so clock drawing, our troops are marching to Staten. We are still stuck in this war for the Holy Roman Empire, but at this point I'm going to say screw it. The English can either win or lose on their own. We'll just get back on with our own conquests when this war is over, however long it takes. And let's come over here to Beck and Trig. I do want to comment on something. So right now, I cannot tell any of these people to end their plots. But if I come over to say, let's see, Holmger, he is trying to fabricate a claim on a duchy, that's fine. And Ragnar is trying to climb it. Let's save Ingfrid, we'll use her for example. Ingfrid, I can't, if I try to ask her to end her plot, she says no. But I believe I can actually send her a gift. 15 gold, 46 opinion. I believe now she will end her plot. So it's just a little tip that I learned recently that you can, maybe it does not always work, but sometimes you can bribe people into ending their plots. And then also, we do have a prisoner here. Sig Sigrid has been in prison for quite some time five years. I believe she was guilty of trying to kill one of her children. We're going to go ahead and ransom her out. Oh, I thought she had been worth more than that. She's married to my brother, after all, who is a count. But I guess she's only worth 10 gold, so we'll get 10 gold out of it. Okay. So, 400 gold now. You know, I could raise mercenaries and go try to beat Holy Roman Empire up some more. Hey look, France is having another revolt. Let's see. They want elective monarchy, okay? And our brother accepts paying ransom for his wife. That, that feels kind of low, but she did try to kill our son. Robert the Cruel in England. 
He wants to put Prince Richard on the throne of England. Alright, stand our troops down. And Denmark over here, what do they want? Danish Civil War for seniority. That's interesting. Okay. So we could we could actually hire some mercenaries, but no. We've already sacrificed enough for England's war over here. We're not messing with that anymore. Let's see. You know what? Screw the war with the Holy Roman Empire. We don't have any troops raised. We've got how many levies do we have right now? Because we have taken a beating. We have about 2,000 troops. Let's let our levies build up some more. And then we're going after Ankerman when whether the war of the Holy Roman Empire has ended or not. Our uh, marshal is initiated a recruit driving more. Excellent. Let's immediately move him back over. Let's see. To Olin. It's just kind of rotating the hum around. Keep. Let's see. There you go. Go to Olin. Waldemar. Let's see. We've got him in seven, where he has not been doing such a great job. Manders, let's see. He's not actively. Make sure he's not actively set to be a commander. Very good. One child likes a guardian. Okay, my daughter Ruth needs a guardian. And someone just died. We'll check that out in a second. Okay, Ruth. Let's see what kind of an education we would like for you to have. You know what? I'm going to educate her myself. Okay, so we're going to keep an eye on the levy sizes. We're going to speed the clock up. And let's see. The war score for the Holy Roman Empire is down to 45%. Their child's been born in our court. At this point, we're just waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Let's see. Okay. Our levy sizes are almost 3,000 now. Neverly, lady has died. So, so lots of deaths going on in our court. Been a lot of turnover. Kind of surprised by that. But anyways, we can raise 3,000 troops now. Engmanland, 1,200. We've got enough. I'm tired of fighting other people's war. We're gonna get back to our own wars. He will not accept vassalization. We're gonna declare war. We could do a holy war actually, but no, other people can join. We're going to do a de jure claim and we are going to. Could press it for Duke Borkvard, make him happy. Or I can do it myself and then just give it to whoever I want to give it to. Okay, so if I press the war myself. I will gain 100 prestige, and then I can immediately turn around and give it to Borkyard to, and that will, he'll be really happy about that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to press the coin for ourselves. He does have an ally. Let's check real quick who his, who his ally is. Chief of Bastrobot. And this guy can raise 
fifteen hundred troops. That's okay, cause we can raise mercenaries if we need to. All right, we are going to declare war. There's your claim on Angamon. Send that off. Raise all of our troops, and let's get them gathered together. Send everyone to Gastrickland. Get everyone raised up there. Okay, Spy Master has had some success in Constantinople. Tolerance. That one might actually be a good one to have because it gives a pending penalty for different culture and for different religion goes down just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and take that one. Let's get all of our troops together in gas, Gastrickland, and sure enough, the chief of Bastrobotan has been called into the war. So we're going to need to make sure we win the war with them, win a few battles. Right. Stuart has collected a special tithe. And let's see. For just a moment. We still have them. Um, okay, what's this? A message about form alliance from Eric Estrin. Really? King of Denmark actually wants an alliance. Well, why not? Except we might need their help sooner rather than later. Okay. And I did check to make sure they were not actively in any wars before we accepted that. All right, so we can get over here to Metal Ped. There's gonna be a, they're gonna have a little bit of a bonus here, but I think we'll be fine. River crossing penalty. I didn't see the river there, but it's okay. We are. They only had one flank. We're gonna crush them. I could have sworn I heard the enemy commander Johan barking orders because I searched the forces never found. He's hiding. Ah, let's check our, my personal combat skill is 9, his is 13. You know what, let's just tell everyone about his cowardice. I don't want to get in a battle with someone who's got a higher combat skill than me. Okay, now let's get over to Angermanlin. There's going to be another river crossing penalty. He's got forest. We should be able to crush them though. We crushed the first army, I think we can crush the second one also. And okay, my daughter Ruth has a temper problem. Let's see, let's encourage her to be more patient. And she got the patient trait, good for her. Now let's see if we can crush, once again they only have one flank, we should be able to crush them. And let's see, once again another. No, I do not want to. I do not want. Uh, I'm probably going to end up getting distressed or depressed. This is not going to go well for me. But I'm def I do not want to duel this guy. I will most likely lose the duel. I shouldn't even have my. I shouldn't even be with my troops in this battle. Alright, we're going to get the siege going. And what is going wrong here? Supply limit. We are over the supply limit. Grr. Okay, you know how many troops are in this county? Only 732. All right, let's um. Hold on. Let's split off a group here, and we will leave 1800 here, and the other group will come back down the metal pad. And also, let's see figure out where I ran off to. I'm no longer leading troops it looks like. Okay, that is good. So I had too many close calls there. My wife is pregnant, that's nice. Let's see, ambitions. Enar wants to become Marshall. When a plot uncovered. Alright, I'm going to take just a quick break here to 
take care of some double check these plots. Nothing that I'm particularly concerned about, okay. Alright, so just as soon as we this war should shouldn't take too long. Alright, so their armies are marching around. So let's have our second army down here march around and intercept them. Get some commanders here. Let's see. Very well. Now we don't have them outnumbered by a lot. Ah, 100 war score, and also we have a new Jewish man come to our court. Ah, he would make an excellent spy master, wouldn't he? We'll keep that in mind, should something happen to the one that we've got already. 100 war score, awful peace, enforce demands. Engmanland is now back in Sweden. Send our troops down. And we are immediately going to, actually, you know what, I think I can revoke, let's see, revoke the Chieftain of Angermanland. This will lower Chief Thor's opinion of you by minus 60. Since Chief Thor is a tribal barbarian, our vassals will not object. Okay. Let's do it. Let's take it off him. And... Though it grieves him deeply, he does submit. Engmanland is now ours. And let's see, it is... I do believe it is a... Tribe? Yes, it is. I don't think we're going to keep Engmanland for ourselves. The reason being, because Duke Borgyard, it is de jure part of one of his duchies. Let's just come over here and look at Dejure Duchess. It is Dejure part of Hasslingland, which he currently holds, right? Yes. So instead of keeping England for myself, I'm going to give it to Duke Borgyard. Yes, that's what we're going to do. We're going to give Angamanland to Borkyard. Okay, so it took a while, but we finally got something to go our way. We have expanded Sweden's border by one county. We've taken Angamanland, and meanwhile the English continue to lose their war with the Holy Roman Empire. Occupation plus 100%, but battles minus 54% for a total of 45 in the green. That war just, we're just completely ignoring that war. I wish it would hurry up and end because I really want to send Harold on a pilgrimage. But hopefully we'll be able to get to that eventually. Let me go ahead and put another cut in right here. And thanks for watching. This is John. See you next time.